Napoleon Crossing the Alps was finished in 1801 by French artist Jacques-Louis David. Commissioned by the King of Spain, it was a token to show the new and improved relationship between Spain and France. In this video, I'm going to describe what the painting depicts and how this piece ties to the neoclassical movement. To get notified of more simple art history videos like this that I post each week, please hit that subscribe button and remember to push the bell icon. In this piece, Napoleon Crossing the Alps, we see Napoleon leading the reserve army across this dangerous mountain pass called St. Bernard in order to go on a military campaign to regain Italy in the year 1800. Napoleon had risen through the ranks of the military during the French Revolution, and by the year 1799, he gained the title of First Consul, very prestigious. And five short years after that, he would become Emperor of France. The artist, David, depicts Napoleon as a glorious victor, with arm outstretched in an orator pose, hand in the shape of a blessing sign, and seated upon a wild yet majestic horse, he mirrors a typical Roman equestrian statue, which is really important to Napoleon because he's trying to connect himself with the great leaders of the Holy Roman Empire. Napoleon looks like the calm within the storm as he's surrounded by this unnavigable ter territory. Look at those huge cliffs, that really wild terrain, and the harsh weather that surrounds him. But at least he looks good and powerful with his windswept hair and his intense gaze. Overall, this painting is very idealized. In other words, Napoleon is meant to look perfect, which is really important because it's been said that Napoleon had an ego. I mean, this guy didn't want anybody to seem more powerful than him. In fact, at his coronation, he took the crown out of the Pope's hand and crowned himself because the Pope didn't have more power than Napoleon. Look at the bottom of this painting. You can see some names etched into stone. These are the names of powerful men Napoleon is following in their footsteps. Hannibal, Charlemagne, and look who's at the very top, Bonaparte, Napoleon himself. Napoleon Crossing the Alps is a great example of the neoclassical art style, which is basically a style that follows after the roots of Greek and Roman art. Now, Napoleon really wanted to align himself with this style because he wanted to connect himself with the great leaders of the Roman Empire, their values, and their ideas. This is why he often commissioned Jacques-Louis David to do his paintings. Jacques-Louis David was a leader in the neoclassical art movement. In fact, some people call him the father. During the French Revolution, he was working for the revolutionists and headed the propaganda department as the lead artist. His job was to sway people politically through his images, and he was really good at his job. This style was a stark contrast to the Rococo movement that was happening before this. In this painting, you see a lot of typical neoclassical art characteristics. Now remember, neoclassicism is a shift back to Greek and Roman art, so you're gonna see a lot of similarities. In this piece, I first wanna direct your attention to the tight brush strokes. They're clean, they're crisp. The colors that are used are earthy, they're natural. There's dynamic posing, which draws your eye right to the center of the piece, which is Napoleon. There are strong diagonal lines, which gives motion and action and tension to the piece. He's dressed in military regalia with soldiers surrounding him. There are strong civic vibes here, feelings of pride, of country, of protecting people, of a calling to arms, of a strong leader who can fight for your country. There's some real ethos working here. These are the characteristics of neoclassicism. In the end, this painting and many of Jacques-Louis David's paintings were straight up propaganda. Napoleon was depicted exactly as he wanted to be seen, the perfect leader for a fallen country, the next emperor of France, of Europe, of the world. To see how the neoclassical art movement fits within art history, make sure you download my condensed European art history timeline. It's linked in the description below. If you have any questions about this piece or anything you found interesting, send me a comment. I'd love to have a conversation. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, send it to your friends, and don't forget to subscribe so you can get updated on new art history videos I publish each week on Thursday. See you guys next time, where the art just keeps getting better.